Hello, and uh, welcome to my first video with sound. Um, I'll apologize ahead of time for the, the, the sound properties here. I might get some echo, and you're probably going to hear me breathing a lot because I don't have a proper mic stand. <coughs> okay, so to start out, I've got the rig. Basically, this is the same rig that I used in class. Uh, if you take a look, I've got uh, the main skeleton that's uh, uh, the spine rig all the way up through the scapula to the shoulder. And uh, I've got a, uh, a bind chain, all right, here, so you can see the bind chain turn off and on or not. Okay, the bind chain isn't on that layer yet. There we go. So I've got the main skeleton chain, I've got the bind chain, IK chain, FK chain. Uh, these are all labeled. If you look here in the outliner, uh, we can see uh, the pelvis joint going all the way down uh, to, to the chin joint there. Uh, coming off the collar joint, I've got a clavicle and a shoulder placeholder joint. That's that little joint right there on the tip. Um, and that joint, I'm not sure about the orientation on that right now. Okay, it's pretty much, you know, world orientation on that. I, I don't need anything much different, honestly. So that'll do. And... Uh, we can go through and we can look at the orientations on these, but uh, all I really need here is uh, orientations to be working properly on the arm and on the clavicle, which is oriented properly there. Um, so I, I'm going to go through all of the different things that I did to set this up in class. Um, and I'm going to go through uh, a little bit slower and uh, uh, hopefully nothing will get screwed up here. Um, it, with the audio, I can at least tell you if something's getting screwed up, so that's a good thing. All right, so uh, let's start with uh, in the outliner here. <coughs> I can see all this stuff. It's all labeled already. I'm not going to bore you with that. So the IK shoulder all the way down to the IK wrist here and the FK shoulder all the way down to the FK wrist. Um, I, I'm going to start making controllers for these. So that's pretty much where the craziness begins. So uh, uh, so let's start off with uh, a NURBS circle. Create NURBS primitive circle. Right. And I'm going to scale that up a little bit. And I want to rotate it 90 degrees in X. Uh, I've got this conveniently set up with snap rotation or discrete rotation. But so I've got, uh, well, I did nine minus 90. It doesn't matter which way. Uh, I'm going to modify freeze transformations here. Okay. So this thing, uh, I'm not showing the grid right now. If I did, you'd see it's right there on the origin. And uh, it's about ready to go. Next thing I'm going to do is uh, group it to itself. So you can see a NURB circle there, control G. And now it's in its own group. Fantastic. So before I start even labeling these, I'm going to duplicate this group three times. Control D, control D, control D. All right, so group one, I'm going to label that uh, left IK wrist control group. Okay, next one, left IK wrist control. So I, I lied a little bit. I am going to bore you with some labeling. Uh, yeah. Oh, you don't need to see these shapes here, shape nodes. Uh, let's do this. Now we can see all of these trans.
transform nodes. And then the next one is going to be uh, FK, because I only need that one controller, the IK, and then a pole vector, which I'll do later. Uh, so next one's going to be left FK uh, shoulder control group. And next one's going to be left FK shoulder control. Next one, left FK elbow control group. Next one, left FK elbow control. Just a microphone there. Sorry. Left FK wrist control control group yeah, that didn't work out and last one left fk wrist control and let's create a locator group that locator to itself and I'm going to call this left arm pull vector control group that's arm I can tell is going to be an issue. But all right, so the last one, left arm, pull, vector, control. Okay. Um, everything's labeled uh, with all my controller groups ready to go. And then last. Uh, bring that outliner back up. I'm going to need that for this next part. So next I can hide the, the main skeleton. I don't need that. And let me bring up the, the bind chain. Okay. So uh, it doesn't matter which one I use, bind chain or here, IK chain. Make it a little simpler. All right. Um, so starting with the wrist control group for the IK, it's going to go to the wrist. So I need to select the wrist joint here and um, control select my group. And then I'm going to go to constrain parent option box. Bring that over here. And turn off maintain offset. Make sure translate and rotate all are selected and I'm going to click apply. There it goes. And so next I'm going to select the shoulder. All right. And I'm going to control select my FK shoulder group and I'm going to apply it the same way. Elbow, elbow control group, apply. And uh, let me take this thing and I'm going to put this on the IK chain at selected objects. And so I can turn the visibility off on that. I turn on the FK chain. And I'm going to select that wrist. Oh, just the wrist. And I'm going to control select the FK wrist control group and apply. Now these controllers, um, the groups too here for the FK, should go on the FK chain at selected objects. And now, let's turn off the FK chain, turn back on the IK chain. Let's place this locator group. All right. Uh, so let me select the elbow. Control select the left arm pull vector control group. And apply. All right. So now let's go through all of these groups here. and select the parent constraints and get rid of them all at once. All right. 
Now, the pole vectors here. I want actually the pole vector control group, and I'm going to move that back. I've still got my snaps on. All right, let's turn that off, and let's move that back, and see how it's moving in two axes there. Um, actually, no, it should be okay. Um, because I can tell the orientation is the same as the elbow. So just don't even worry about that. Just move it back. Um, what I, eh, I'll, I'll leave it this way. Um, later on, I could theoretically just plug in these values for the one on the other side. So that's good enough. Um, Next, I need to start setting up controllers. And this group, by the way, should go on the IK chain. And so I can turn it off as well. Uh, so let me, um, wait, did I get rid of, yeah, okay, good. Uh, let me now put in an IK handle for this IK chain. All right, skeleton IK handle tool. And let's take a look in the tool options box. I'm purposely doing this at a low resolution so that it's not going to be too big of a file. So IKRP solver, that's what I'm looking for. I want to make sure that it's not an SC solver. So I'm going to click and make sure I'm on the IK chain. I'm going to click from the shoulder to the wrist and done. Then I'm going to select this controller and I'm going to shift select my IK handle and constrain point option box and no maintain offset, uh, constrain all axes at excellent. So that right there is now controlling my stuff. All right, now uh, I need this pull vector to pull vector constrain the IK handle. All right, so pull vector first, IK handle second, and constrain pull vector. And that's done. Now I can select that pull vector and move it, make sure, okay, good, the elbow is following. All right, the IK chain is done. Let's pull up the FK chain and take a look. Um, first thing I want to do is I want to make <coughs> this controller, not the group that it's in, but the controller affect the next controller's group in the form of a parent constraint. So I'm going to go to uh, the controller, I select it, and then I'll control select the FK elbow group and constrain parent option box because this time we need to maintain offset. If we don't, then the elbow controller group is going to snap over here, which is not good. Okay, So let's apply that. And then here I want this controller, not the group, to select the group on the wrist controller. All right. So now again, maintain offset. And this time I can just add. All right. So now the skeleton won't move but the controller should move just as advertised fantastic um, that IK handle that's on there you can see that that should be on the IK chain over here all right so now I've got the controllers set up to affect each other which is what I want uh, next I want uh, um <coughs> next I want the controllers to affect the joints. All right, so I'll select the controller, shift select the joint, all right, and constrain parent option box. And in this case, I want to uh, translate and rotate and turn off 
maintain offset. I'm going to click apply. That should work. Then this controller, hit Q. All right, I'm going to have that affect this one, apply. And this controller, I'm going to have that affect this one, apply. Uh, something I just realized on the IK chain over here. I never set up this controller to rotate that, not the IK handle, but the joint itself right there. And apply, same way. All right. So check rotation on that joint okay must have control Z'd it all right something didn't look right there when I did that so that one should control oh okay I get it I can't have it control the uh the translation of that joint. That's the problem. So turn off translation there and have it just affect the rotation of that joint. Okay. So let's hit Q, make this easier to select. And just select that and apply. And there we go. Now it's actually working. Okay. So I can test the IK. Works. Let me test the controller for rotation. And I won't see it work. I gotta go in there and select this. There we go. And it's rotating. Okay. So the IK is done, the FK is done, and uh, now I need to set up blend colors nodes to control these joints. Let me take this guy and I'm going to move him up and let's turn on the bind chain so I can see it and the FK chain let me rotate this guy down and looks great. So let me turn this off and I can hide this for now. Let's bring up the hypershade. That would have been window rendering editor's hypershade. And uh, so in the hypershade, get a little bit more space here. In the hypershade, I'm going to map out these three joints. And okay don't have a whole lot of space to work in here so let me pull these off to the side line these up with each other a little bit zoom in on them and now I want utilities blend colors there we go now as general rule I want to do the FK into color 1 IK into color 2 and then output into left shoulder all right. Now we're not talking about colors, we're talking about rotations. So you'd be pretty familiar with that concept by now. Uh, so let's start with the FK. I'm going to middle click and drag from that node onto the blend colors node and drop. Click other. All right. Here's my connection editor. I want to connect rotate with color one rotate x to color one red y color one green z to color one blue all right now I'll come back into here and let's do this for the ik drag and drop other and rotate to color
color two. X to red, Y to green, Z to blue. And then back in here, output from blend colors to the regular shoulder joint. Click other. Output RGB to rotate down here. X, Y, and Z. R to X, G to Y, B to Z. Okay, and you can see this moving now. Um, and I could even look at this blender here and come into the channel box. I can move that blender and watch it blend from one to the other. Here we go. Let's leave it at point 0.5. And we'll come back later and set up a controller for that. So let's do the elbow. Map them out. Move them over. That's just a left click and drag to move them over. And zoom in on them. Grab another blend cl colors node. And let's do FK first. Middle click and drag from there to there. Other. In here. Look for rotate. Color one. X, R, Y, G, Z, B. And let's do IK, other. Rotate color two. X, R, Y, G, Z, B. And output from blend colors to left elbow, other. Output to rotate. R, X, G, Y, B, Z. And we've got the elbow. So let's do the wrists next. Uh, tough to grab that joint. Grab that wrist. Grab that wrist. And grab that wrist. There we go. Three wrists. And hyper shade, map them out, drag them over, blend colors, and let's start with the FK rest, other, and down to rotate, there it is, color one, X, R, Y, G, Z. And IK next, other, color two, rotate, here we go, X, R, Y, G, Z, B, and then output to the regular wrist, right there, other, output to rotate, R, X, G, Y, B, Z. And it looks like all of them are working. Fantastic. Cool. So next thing I need to do is I need to get all of these to hang on to the shoulder placeholder, which shouldn't be a big problem. Let's let's just sort of mentally visualize this for a moment. The shoulder placeholder, really it just has to manipulate this one, right? Because if that gets manipulated, the others will get manipulated. So I don't actually need to put all of these into the same group. And that could be a problem actually if I do. I know I did it in class, but I want to keep this simple and, and keep this in such a way that it's absolutely easiest to understand. So just this one really needs to be affected. And once that gets affected, then the rest of them will follow. Okay. Um, now, for this, that one is going to rotate with everything else, but it's not going to necessarily move with the others 
when they're following the shoulder placeholder joint on the main skeleton there. Um, and the IK joint, when that gets moved, right, well, it's going to sort of do the IK from reverse. And that's okay, as long as it just sticks with that shoulder placeholder joint. So I think the point here is uh, what I want to be able to do, I really just want to point constrain them there. <coughs> this is going to work even better than it did in class. Uh, so I'm going to take this, not the controller, but the group. So let's bring up that outliner so we can see it. I want the group node there. Oh, uh, yeah, group node right there. And uh, I want to shift select uh, this bind chain shoulder joint and shift select this IK chain shoulder joint. And uh, I can take them all and put them all into a group. Control G, no error messages. I feel pretty good about this. So if I take this group and just start moving it, it's moving the way I want, right? Uh, so what I want to do is I want to point constrain it to that shoulder placeholder joint. That's really the best way to rig this. Uh, it's going to work just how you should expect a, an arm rig to work. So uh, now since I don't have the pivot right there, I do need to maintain offset. If I don't maintain offset, all of these arms are going to jump over here. Okay. So uh, uh, I will select the shoulder placeholder joint right there. Then control select this group, constrain point option box, maintain offset, and add. Nothing jumped, nothing went crazy. That's what I'm looking for. So here, let me take this clavicle, rotate it, and I like what I'm seeing. It works. So all of this is working pretty well now. I need another controller in here. And I want this controller to uh, control the blend between IK and FK. And what I'm going to do, and this is uh, getting a little fancy here, I'm going to switch to, uh, let me switch to my side view. And I'm going to come in here pretty close. I'm going to go to Create CV Curve Tool. Uh, let me check the tool options there. I want it to be uh, I want it to be cubic. Uh, why not? Uh, you could do it this either way. But uh, so let me zoom in. I want it to be relatively small, and I've got no snaps on. I'm just going to start drawing. All right, two nerd points if you can figure out what I'm drawing here. got a curve. Ha ha. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this curve and uh, it would have been a lot nicer if I drew it right there on the origin because then that's where the pivot would be. <sighs> okay, 
So let me just duplicate this, all right, um, and move the duplicate over. I'm going to take this I, and I'm going to see if I can't figure out a way to make this look sort of like an F. Uh, I didn't really put a whole lot of thought into this, I don't know if you could tell. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to take that one and move it up here. And that one, move it over. Um, sort of like that. And this. Uh, I think I've got too many there. Oh. That to me sort of looks like an F. Let's see if we can't get all these. Oh no, I don't want that one. Um, all of these. Let me move these over a little bit. So I've got more of an F. Alright. And then let me grab everything and move it a little bit to the right. I know it's going to work. I just want it to work well. I want it to look good. So, okay. This IK, I can make this turn into this FK. All right. So, I know this is a little bit more than what I showed you in class. I'm going to select the IK and shift select the FK. Or actually, let me do that the other way around. It doesn't really matter. Whichever one you select last is going to get the blend shape. So let's go to, uh, still in animation, create deformers, blend shape. And uh, then I can get rid of the one I selected first. And I can check out that blend shape. Ooh. IKFK. Wow. So, okay. Now I can center the pivot on this. Once I've got the blend shape on there, I can't make sub-object transformation. So I can't go into CV mode, move the CVs up here to the origin so that the pivot will be right in the center of the thing. And that would have been the smarter way to go. Um, here's what I can do. <coughs> Instead of centering the pivot, which by the way, will not work in a script. What I can do instead is move the whole darn thing up there, group it to itself. All right, but now I got to remember I'm working with a group. Okay, so let's go down to the outliner here. Take a look. I got oh, I got a group there. I better call this. I'm gonna call this the left arm pin group or something like that. Left arm, uh, shoulder, pin, group, fantastic. Uh, this one that I just created on the FK, IK, uh, Dilma Bobber, uh, let's call that, um, I K F K control group and on the object below curve one let's call that uh, I K F K control and now I'm going to take the group and let's uh, snap it up here to the wrist shall we um, oh, gee, I should be turning that thing around. Well, let's rotate it 180. Double check that, 180, good. And let's move it over again. And now the group sh shouldn't have gone anywhere. So that's what I want. 
I'm going to take the group, let me snap to point, and snap to this wrist. Move, snap to, oh, select from the center, snap to the wrist already. Okay. And then from there, I turn off snaps. And I'm just going to move this up a little bit. And, and I should have done this when this was didn't have any rotations on it. I could have zeroed those things out. Uh, let me just uh, take this and do a little rotation. The motion on this thing is not going to affect anything, so uh, it's no big deal. All you need, you don't even need to be able to translate or rotate it, and it doesn't matter, you know, we're on a group or whatever. Um, I just did that so I could snap it up here and have it snap right there. So all of this stuff, and and I probably will. Uh, at least translate and rotate. I'll leave scale alone. I'll right click and hold over those attributes and like lock selected so that way uh, they're not gonna bother anything. But for now I'm not gonna do that. Later on when I'm finalizing my rig that's something that I'll do. Protects it from well stupid animators. Common running theme there. So, okay, I've uh, got this, it's got a blend shape, ooh, crazy. Uh, so now uh, I'm going to take the object and I'm going to put a new attribute on it. Let's go to uh, edit, add attribute, there, there we go, and this attribute, I'm going to call this, um, IKFK minimum 0 maximum 10 I like to give myself a little bit oh, quite a few more numbers in between there uh, allows for a smoother float and by default I want this to set at 0 so uh, we've got a float and this is good let's click OK there's a new attribute so I want this attribute to control a number of different things here. Uh, in the hypershade, I want it to control the blends, but I also want it to control the blend shape on itself. Okay. So right now, with the blend shape, oh, hey, with the blend shape at one, saying F K, and if I middle click and drag to zero. It's at IK. All right. So let's keep it on FK. FK is going to be IKFK zero. All right. And curve to one. All right. And I also want to control these blend colors nodes. So to do that, I need to find them. Let's go to a two view and utilities. And I can see them right there. I can select all three of them and check out where the blender goes. If I put the blender at zero, it's on IK. If I put it on one, it's on FK. So let's keep it on one. All right. And I've got the attribute selected. All right. And all three of these guys selected. I'm going to go to animate, set key or sorry, set driven key, set. Fantastic. Now since those were selected, here they are. Uh, I'm going to select all three and blender. That's going to be the driven attribute here. Then I'm going to go to uh, the IKFK switch here. And uh, well, Notice that it's not following along there. I'm going to have to fix that in just a minute, but for now it don't matter. Uh, so I'm going to select the IK switch and click on load. Uh, oh, uh, well, I have to go back and load the drivers or load the driven again. 
So, yeah, flow driven. Here we go. Blender and IKF or IKFK switch load driver. That's what I want. And there's my IKFK attribute. And right now it's set so that it's blending the FK. It says FK. It's on zero. Good. Let's key that. And so now with that keyed, turn that off. Uh, now I'm going to, oh, I do have to bring that back. Uh, I'm going to select these three guys. Uh, well, first I need to select this. Uh, put my IKFK to 10. Then I'll select these guys, put my blender to 0. So now it's blending to the IK. And uh, so with 10 and blending to IK, I should key that. And now I'm going to grab this FK thing here and I'm going to click on the blend shape right there. Right? Blend shape input and load driven. Okay. I see the blend shape right there. And I want curve two. So right now it's an FK. Uh, so let's change curve two to zero. So or sorry, it's it's following the IK. So I change curve two to zero so it says IK and I'll key that. Alright. So now grab the IKFK switch, bring this down to zero. Now it's following the FK. Um, so the blend shape there should be at one so that it'll say FK. And I'll key that. So now I'll close this out. This uh, IKFK switch will control all those blending and it'll cl control its own blend shape. So now it's an IK mode, now it's an FK mode. You have just created a blend. So let's put this at 5, right halfway in between, which is where it was when I first uh, threw it up here. And I want to take this guy and, or sorry, uh, select the wrist, and then sh shift select this guy. And let's constrain point but let's maintain offset, okay, and apply, close, and so now when I do blend this, it's going to follow along, so, see that, fantastic, now we've got a rig that totally works, and uh, thank you for watching, Thank you for putting up with my heavy breathing and bad microphone noise. And uh, uh, I guess uh, contact me if you have any questions. Um, yeah, I'm going to bed. Okay. Seems uh, just as I was about to close this out, I realized... Uh, there's one or two things here that I haven't showed you. Um, and I wanted to sort of recap a little bit. Let me uh, let me put this IKFK blend. Uh, let me set that to uh, 5 here. So we can take a look at something. When I built these arms one thing that I did that you guys didn't get to see is uh, I disconnected this hand joint all right I unparented it from the wrist I duplicated the wrist unparented one of the duplicates and then scaled it back to there all right the the one that was still parented all right then I renamed that the forearm joint and I froze transformations uh, on the elbow, which would have been scaled down. Then, uh, so that created this forearm joint. Now, even before I did that, after I disconnected the hand, uh, 
what I did is I, I took, uh, well, actually, this elbow joint. I shift, selected that. Now, it wasn't parented to this hand at the time. All right, and I did constrain orient, all right, with no offset, all right. Um, and what I wanted was I wanted this joint to have the exact same orientation as this joint, all right. Then I removed the constraint, and that's when I duplicated this guy, and then uh, unparented one of them, scaled the other one back to there, and then froze transformations. So one of the coolest things about this rig, um, I even say ingenious, I didn't come up with it really, I, I stole it from someone else, but uh, one of the most ingenious things about this rig is the fact that it on the bind chain it does not connect from the elbow to the forearm to the wrist. What it's supposed to do is the wrist is since it has the exact same orientation as that joint and that joint, what it's going to do is going to feed back its orientation into that forearm joint. That's what I forgot to show. So whatever orientation this wrist has, uh, it's going to feed back to here. So I'm going to select that wrist joint. Uh, well, it's only going to feed back the X transform. My bad. So radial transform that see the red axis there that's what it's going to feed back so shift select the forearm joint and constrain or sorry no i don't want to constrain it actually even best i do this in uh, hypershade window rendering editors hypershade this is this is what i showed you guys in class this should uh, seem familiar to you so here, let me grab these two, move them off to the side so I can focus in on them a little better. All right, I've got a wrist joint and I got a forearm joint. Uh, what I want to do is let's feed back from, oh, sorry, not from the forearm joint, from the wrist joint. Let's feed back into the forearm joint. So I'm middle clicking and dragging from wrist to forearm and dropping. I'll click other and uh, in here, I'm going to look for rotate on both sides. And where's the other one? There we go. And it's just the radial rotation. So if you look at this, it's just that red rotation. What's red? That's X, right? Um, and notice that on the forearm joint, X should represent the radial rotation too. There we go. See that? It does. So let's feed back that now. Rotate X from the wrist, all right, to rotate X from uh, on the forearm. And uh, well, that's about it. Now, if I want to test that and take a look. Uh, let me blend my IK one way or the other. doesn't matter which way I go. Um, let's uh, blend that IK FK to 10 there. That's giving me IK. And uh, let's select this wrist rotator. And let's rotate some in X. Now, it's also getting some rotation from down here. So... Uh, so it's not going to exactly match. All right. So we can look. I've got rotate x90. And if I look here on that joint, it's a little bit more because it's getting rotation. The, the bind chain is getting rotation from down here, not just IK. So the bind chain is just feeding back whatever it has. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm satisfied that it's working. And this rotation is gonna is gonna make that rotate. Um, so now maybe in a later installation of this, I might show you how I actually paint weights for this arm. Uh, that's the one thing that we're gonna touch on probably a little too lightly in 241, uh, as if. Well, uh, <laughs> never mind. 
but we are going to see later on how to paint weights a little bit. Um, so as far as that goes, the skeleton is working. You can see it work there. Um, it is feeding back rotation from the wrist and the forearm. Uh, I've explained to you the couple of steps with creating that forearm joint and, and making sure that the wrist, forearm, uh, both matched the orientation of the elbow from when we first created this, uh, the skeleton. Um, so that should be it. Um, this time I'm going to bed for real. So uh, good night, y'all. You're probably watching this like midday <laughs> in the morning or something. Yeah, I'm up late at night creating this thing. Uh, I hope you like it, and uh, if you do, uh, I'm probably going to make some more of these. I, I like these. So uh, y'all take care, and like I, like I said before, if you have any questions about this whole rig, uh, any part of it, just uh, send me an email or uh, come to me in class. Let me know, um, and, uh, and we'll, we'll get it all straightened out.